It's a stunning day, as you can see. Trees are all falling off, leaves are all falling off. So I'm gonna have to be picking up leaves like mad. Or we'll better turn on some lights as well if I'm gonna be filming. I'm such an amateur. Okay. So, last update, the plan was to, well, part of the plan was to take the heads off, do the valve guide oil seals, and skim the heads to raise the compression ratio to make it more powerful and more economical. More to the point, doesn't need any more power. Even running on eight, it doesn't need any more power. Um, so, how far have I got, Robert, you might be saying? And the answer is... Just to spin it around. Uh, 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 uh. Rocker box is off this one. Inlets are off, exhausts off, heads off this one. And uh, yeah, interestingly, or to me anyway, I did the top dead center test and it transpired that the cam timing on the front engine was about 15 degrees retarded from where it should be. That's possibly why it was down the scrapyard, because somebody had put it together with a new head gasket and then it never performed properly, which it wouldn't do. And that would also explain the low cranking pressures when I did a compression test. So the other thing of interest, let me get my torch, that sort of validated this whole malarkey this is what I found in number three pot. I don't know if you can see how oily that is, but it's actually a puddle. Un poudre of oil in there. So, that was just running down the valve guides, and I thought, oh, talking to the back of the camera, I thought, huh, why is that running down the back of the valve guide quite so violently? Well, the answer would appear to be, here's the cylinder head, and you'll notice there's no inlet valves. So I've just taken off the two exhaust valves on that end, because I'm taking them all out anyway, and stuff my boots. If there's no valve guide oil seals on there. How bizarre. So that'll explain why, when he gets a few miles on it, the bad boy drinks like a f -f fish. So many rode up. Valve guides, um, valve seats all look good. Remarkably good for an engine that's been down the scrapyard. Exhaust valve seats. Oh, it's all a bit black, isn't it? Not sure if you can see that, but they're not looking bad. So that's good. Um, here's the old head gasket, which obviously been on there for a while because. Um, a lot of the uh, tiny little water flow holes are completely blocked up with gook. That ain't no good. And um, camshafts all look fine, valves all look fine that I've taken out, as you can see. And that's as far as I have got. The compression ratio worked out to be, what was it, 9.98 to 1, I think it was. Number 9.92, I can't remember now. Um, oh, let's put up my little viewing window. Uh, yeah, 9.92 to 1, I think it was. So, <clears throat> the plan is to skim the heads. I've worked out that to get 12.5 to 1, I'm going to need to skim the head by 2.6 mil. Now, the edge of the valve is only 3 mil from the edge of the head, so that may or may not be doable. I've next got to stick some light springs on two of the valves assemble the head onto the engine, just lightly nip it down with the gasket in there, put some plaster... <coughs> excuse me, just bolted a load of peanuts. Um, <laughs> put some plaster scene on the piston, time it up, turn it over, and see how much clearance there is between the valve and the piston. And that'll govern how much I can skim the head by. So I'm looking at myself, and I should be looking at the lens, as usual. And that's about it, really. Trial run was good. Going to the scrap, going to the um, Blenheim Palace car show was <laughs> was an absolute riot. 
I don't think people could quite comprehend what the hell they were seeing, as Veronica put it. What the hell is that? And um, it was fine to drive, just very, very thirsty, as I've said. And But with the cam timing completely wrong, the ignition timing five degrees after top dead centre on the front engine, and uh, basically the back engine running as rich as a pig, Not quite sure how that saying works, but uh, it's not surprising it used lots of fuel. So I'm quite optimistic about the cam timing right, raise the compression ratio as much as I can, get the back engine running. Encouragingly, on the front engine, if you look at the plugs, where's my torch? They're all shouting at the screen, you put it on the workbench. Here we go. Encouragingly, if you look at those plugs, you can see we've got tan, tan, black, bit tan, tan, black but not totally black. Whereas on the back engine, we've got, oh that's an interesting strobe effect on the lens, that's giving people headaches. Mm, okay, hold on. Alternative lighting technique. So you can see the back ones, oily, scummy, oily, scummy, scummy, filthy, trump. So, all in all, front engine's looking quite positive, mixture-wise. Back engine's looking black as a black thing. But the point is, both of these engines have a similar series of copper pipes, which I was assuming... I bet I can show you. I was assuming that because these copper pipes are all different lengths and whatnot, I might be getting different mixtures in the cylinders. But if you look at those pipes, back engine, those pipes, front engine, they're all, you know... Comparable, twisty, some are shorter than others, etc. But the point is, it looks like the front engine is getting a relatively even mixture. So this means I might not have to do a separate valve adjustability module on each pipe. So I can adjust each one separately. I might be able to get the engines to run evenly without any of that malarkey at all. Which is just as well, really, because my oxygen sensors, oxygen temperature sensors, I ordered from across the sea into the Orient have now taken seven weeks to get here, I think. In fact, I think today is the last day they're supposed to have been delivered. Uh, nothing's happened. So, that's where I am at the moment. I'm going to continue taking out valves. I'm going to continue to work out stuff. And I shall pop up some more data, probably on this video, to keep it continuous and uh, let you know what's happening. That's where I am now. Cheerio! Hello. Cleaned up the top of the piston. I'm using this as my test cylinder. And I'm mushing up my 900 year old plasticine, which is just about starting to cooperate and become all squidgy mushers as we want. And then I'm going to squadge this over the top of the piston. I've got the head gasket on, of course. Like so. It doesn't really matter if it sticks to the piston or if it sticks to the valve. Just as long as I can measure how thick it's gone. And if I make it a minimum of my safe thickness, so if I say give it 4mm in thickness, then that should be more than enough. If I've got 4mm of clearance, and I know it's all going to be okay. We want it to get right up to the sides of the ball without actually sticking to it. 
so that we get the edge of the valve. Okay, next thing is to put the cylinder head on and um, time it all up. I might as well put it on top dead centre now. That is TDC. Now we're going to see if we've got plasticine indentation or a great big mess. Okay. So I'm going to show you this in more detail. A nice crescent there from the edge of that valve. There we go. A nice crescent there where that path goes. So now if I cut the plasticine in half, I will. See how thick it is in those two places. Exhaust valve. Well, there's the edge of the valve and that's the face of the piston. So we've got all that to play with, which is oodles. And on this one, there's the face of the piston, and there's the face of the valve. So again, a good three and a half mil maybe, I can measure that. So that's looking quite positive. There we go. So that there is our clearance, which is 3.7 mil. 3.7 mil. So if I took 2.6 off, that leaves me 0 0.11. 1 1.1. That's not too bad. This might actually be viable. Okay, ta-ta! Front engine put back together. Time to take apart the back engine. First thing to do, take out the distributor for bolt. I'm quite excited to see what I find inside this engine, because this is the one that had the really black spark plugs. <coughs> Gosh, I'm a croaky boy. Must remember not to pull, drop anything down those. In fact, I'll put a bit of rag in there, I think. So I've left the plugs out. <coughs> I didn't want to be dropping stuff in.
Okay. Well, that's a bloody oily mess. That's a milky copper. Let's see if I've still got any camera. Or... Oh, yep, still recording. Good. Have a look in here. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, we're swinging. Look how oily those are. Goopy McGooper. Well, not only was this a bit of an oiler, but it was also a bit of a potential head gasket blower. So here I am milling my cylinder head on the huge mill from hell. And that's what you call a mill. This was the only mill I could find of all my friends that uh, was big enough to take a 42 inch long throw, which is what this needed. I think this actually goes up to 43, which is just enough. And it's got just enough width on the cutting head as well. This is a... That's a 15 thou cut. And I'm about halfway through. This will take me up to... I was at 34, 44, this could take me up to 49, and that'll be 50 odds, so I've got another 30 to go. So yeah, all going quite well. It took me ages to work out how to bolt it down. I had to bolt inside the gallery at the front, because there was no flange, so there's a bolty little plate going over the uh, waterway. So far, so good. It hasn't flown off the mill, which is nice. So I've just done another plasticine test on this head, which I skimmed, just to check how close the valves are now to the pistons. And I'm going to whip the head off again and see how thick the plasticine is. Because that way, I'll either have peace of mind or a technical hitch. <laughs> Well, that looks all right. Let's bring it up to top dead centre and you can have a look. 
So, we've got a tiny little edge there, which is the edge of the head, I think. That's definitely not where the valve was. We've got a circle there. That's the edge of the valve. And that's miles away from the head. Oodles McPoodles. And that's the edge of the head there. So all in all, I think of it on for a winner. There's no exhaust valve marks at all. So I think we're miles away. We've got that much. Four or five mil. So because these pistons are dished, I've obviously got away with seeming a darn sight more off the head. Well, ten thousand more off the head. So that's a big relief. Now I can put it all together again.